I'm here at the opening of the Alzheimer's Cafe in Paul, which is the very first in Dorset, where I'll be finding out more about Alzheimer's and the need for this cafe in the local area. sitting down with me today so um would you be kind enough to tell me uh what was the idea behind the creation of this cafe the cafes in general are meant to help destigmatize having dementia and talking about it so people don't have to hide away so there's a place for them to come and say um, this is about us this is where we're going to be noticed and accepted and included and um, this is an illness that happens to some people and it's not their fault and uh, we want to take part in life as much as we can. So that was the thinking to make dementia talkable yes, about course, yeah. and um, this particular cafe here has been 11 years in the planning. <laughs> Mandy wanted a cafe here 11 years ago and oh. she's been persistent in mm. hoping, hoping it could happen and it's happened. The first cafe in the United Kingdom opened up in 19, no 2000. The first one in the world was in 1997 by my colleague in the Netherlands, Dr. Bear Miesen, and the Farnborough Cafe was launched in 2000, so we're approaching our 20th anniversary year. So for us, the thinking yes. behind it was in doing something for the community, the people who live with dementia every day, and the people that support them, and having attended the cafes that, that are run by Gemma and the teams that, that do this, we just felt this was a brilliant way of actually helping people to feel safe to go somewhere where they can be together because very often what happens is people with dementia um, will be segregated from their carers that you they might go to the same building even but the people with dementia will go one way while their carers go another way because dementia's still got such a stigma attached to it and it's not talked about and what would you say is the main benefit of this cafe for both those with dementia and for carers or families the main benefit hopefully is that people are going to feel that there's a safe place they can come and meet other people. Um, we hope that within the metaphor of all in the same boat, as you see in all the lovely t-shirts around, <laughs> that people can feel a little bit like uh, shipmates mm -hmm. and understand each other, um, and understand each other even beyond some of the understanding that's possible within families, where there may not be so much um, knowledge and, and uh, acceptance of the illness. And so we really hope, first of all, there's gonna be that feeling of safety and, and um, camaraderie but beyond that, we want people to have opportunities to learn about the illness and also the psychological aspects of what happens to you when you either have a chronic illness you can't get better from, or if you're caring for someone who has an illness they can't get better from. So we put a lot of focus on all the topics and themes on the emotional aspects of having dementia, caring for people with dementia. So we even have sometimes guilt competitions at our cafes to give you an idea. Yeah, that's how, how emotional it gets. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so uh, what could we expect to see tonight um, at the cafe? So um, a big part of the um, cafe is to create a safe space mm -hmm. for people. So there'll be some times for socialization um, and making people feel really welcome when they come in. And that's really important to us to create a really um, safe space for people. Um, and then when those people have uh, find that they're in a comfortable environment then uh, we will be having some um, education um, during the actual session as well. I see. And they'll, they'll get refreshments yeah. and music. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yes, of course, the yeah. yeah. The refreshments are, I'm yeah. sure, are a big part. Yeah, yeah. Some amazing cakes. <laughs> amazing oh, cakes, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> Historically, all the societies and the countries that developed um, support groups were called Alzheimer's societies and that's true of um, here in the United States and Canada and the Netherlands and wherever, wherever. So when the first Alzheimer Cafe came out in the Netherlands, it was just called the Alzheimer Cafe because like the Alzheimer Society, everybody knew about it. But the small print behind all those societies and related neurological disorders. So the Alzheimer Cafe is for everybody with any type of dementia and everybody else who's interested in dementia. Mm. It's for everybody. So I think it's important to say that professionals can attend, as Gemma says, students. literally students, yeah. Children? Yeah. Anybody, um, it okay. is that safe space. If they if they feel comfortable in that space and they they don't disturb other people, <laughs> then uh, they're they're welcome. We've even had people come to the Farnborough Cafe who've had other chronic illnesses, and they've said, "We don't have any support groups like this for you know our condition, our chronic illness. May we come and be with you because these things are relevant to us too. These themes and discussions. So anyone can come. Of course." And so uh, how important is that social aspect? Obviously you say that you've um, met people uh, not with the same support and it's a nice safe, 
safe place for um, people with Alzheimer's. So how important is that um, social aspect for you? Social aspect's very important because one of the things that we, we if we're going to feel comfortable, we feel comfortable when we are in a setting where um, normally in this country where yes. we're eating or drinking something or something <laughs> like that is happening. Yeah, um, and so it, it is really important that we have a balance between the opportunity for people to, to share their stories, the, the, the all in the same boat theme. Mm. It comes from that, being with somebody who's maybe in a similar situation or can show empathy to the situation for the other person. And so where else are there um, Alzheimer's cafes like this? Alzheimer's so cafes have been started in uh, quite a few countries in the world, but in the moment we've got them in the Netherlands, um, you've got them in Belgium, Canada, United States, mm -hmm. Ireland has quite a few right now. Um, in Aruba, Kurosawa started them, they've been tried in Italy and in Greece, and I can't remember where else, so about a dozen countries yeah. at the moment. And um, yeah, most of the cafes in the United Kingdom are in the south part of the country. We don't have so many uh, spread elsewhere yet. The most con concentrated spot is on the Isle of Wight. Seven Alzheimer cafes there, even a specialist one for people with early onset illnesses, some people in their 30s. So uh, you say there are seven in the Isle of Wight. Do you know roughly how many there are throughout the United Kingdom at all? Or? We're looking at about 20. 20, I see. Yeah. And the numbers vary at times because there are other cafe models too, but this is the original model where education and socialization mm are focused on together. And so what happens next uh, for this cafe and for the future of these kind of cafes? So we think the, the focus for this one is we, um, we want the community to be involved. We want as many people from the community to come to receive that education, to receive um, that safe space where they can learn more um, as well and also for those friendships to develop because the whole thing around the cafe culture um, makes people feel safe mm -hmm. and they, it makes people um, relax that little bit more so for us the, we, we hope it will massively take off there. I see. And If I could add to that at the Farnborough Cafe we have some couples and the only place they get out to once a month is our cafe. It's mm -hmm. the only safe space they find where so, people don't mind yeah. what's going on, what the behaviors are. Everyone there, the professionals, volunteers, the other family members are knowledgeable of what's happening. There's no nothing that we can't do within that setting. So, so it's very yes, safe. Yes, it is. And may I also ask, uh, so you said that you wanted it here for 11 years now at Simon Cafe. Mm. May I ask uh, why it took so long to... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It doesn't normally take me that long to, to get something <laughs> to organised, but it, no, to do anything. Normally, it's, it's sort of a quick turnaround. Really, because it had to be the right time. Luxury I care see. had to be at the point where um, we were able to support this. We needed volunteers. Um, education. We mm -hmm. needed the education. We needed to make sure that we were able to support the model and sustain it because this isn't just about tonight. No, of course. You know, no, yeah. it's really important that we've got the, the infrastructure to take yes. it forward. We're really committed to this. Yes, in the best interest. Yeah. Of so, and it doesn't. Say, I didn't sort of think about it 11 years ago and then do nothing. We've re remained in touch. Yeah, we've, <laughs> yes, of we've course. We've yeah. throughout that time been using the, the Gemma's teaching model um, through in all of our homes. So, this is just sort of an evolution for us, really. Um, I see. Yeah. And the right time for sure. Yeah, and definitely the right time. The right time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's everything. So, thanks very much for sitting down with me and. Uh, I hope everything goes well with the cafe, so Thank thanks very, very much. much. Thank we're you. expecting you to enjoy it tonight too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very we'll much do, yeah. for giving us a window. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, Thank thanks you. very much. Thank you. Thank you.